gets invested in thinking one human comes or goes is going to change what happens here. That's when they get tripped up. Fred, for years, was seen as the head of the church. Not by us. Not by you. And I told you a bit ago, we told you that repeatedly. Right. You being everyone out there, not necessarily you personally. Christ. We told you repeatedly it was a democracy. He told you all repeatedly, the very minute this church doesn't want me preaching, I won't be preaching. Our org chart is a flat line with Christ. Christ, a flat line. There were rumors for years that Fred had passed away. It was, <laughs> that was called I, the sure annual wishful thinking yeah, as far we, as we I could tell. Get well, I mean, Fryer, I, somebody calling us about every well, year to check and it out. And he had eight or ten or twenty different diseases. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> there are other people that said he had passed away and you guys were covering it up. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys have heard all of this, but can you, can you address what his death did mean to the church? That he was dead. Yeah. That the Lord had ended his years on this earth. That he who has the breath of life of every human in his hand, the set time came for that breath of life to end, and he was dead. Period. That's all it meant to what this church was going to do. What about to you as God, you as family? Well, I mean, he was our father and we loved him. And you deal with that, and you deal with that in a scriptural framework. What you don't do is bow down and worship a dead body, what you don't do is sorrow without hope. What you don't do is pretend like he was anything other than what he was. None of those things you do. And what you do do is you see the hand of God in it, and you see anything that you should learn with how and when God did that, and you do your proper Bible-based sorrowing, not out on a public street like some kind of a hired mourner, not with a lying preacher, so-called standing up at the front saying a bunch of things that aren't true, not making a public spectacle out of it. You don't do any of those things. You guys know that a lot of people say you preach hate. We preach the hatred of God, not the, uh, the hatred of man. See, the hatred, this is such an easy concept. The hatred of, of man is a base human passion that you or I might feel. I hate you. We're not talking about the hatred of God there. The hatred of God is an attribute of his God, like his love and like his mercy. And all it really is, if you think about it, it's construed to the scripture as his fixed determination to punish the wicked in hell for their sin. We are the best friends that the homosexual community has. And we are the only people who truly love them. Everybody else has their own agenda for lying to them. By a Bible standard, we are the only ones who are willing to tell them what the Scripture actually says. If you want to define love another way, if you want to go down to the Hallmark shop and crack open a couple hilarious birthday cards and define love that way, you go ahead and go for it. But from a Bible standpoint, we are the only ones. And, you know, journalists, journalists love irony. So there you go. There's a yeah. great big ball of irony for you there that from a Bible perspective... We're the only ones who love you. We truly love them. And what else is our purpose? Right. How could what do we care otherwise? Be? Would you tell your child, if you saw the child about to do something that you really, really believed was going to harm that child, is it love or is it hate to use everything you had to try to persuade that child and if you had the power, legally, stop that child. And everybody from doing knows it. that concept. Right. You know the concept of an intervention? You got right. a friend who's hooked on heroin and you can't get him off of it. And so at some point, everybody gets together and says, heroin's bad, okay? That's what exactly. you do. But people don't want to attribute that same kind of a motivation to us. You sp you've spent some time with us, and you can spend as much time as you want with, with us. And what you're going to find is exactly what Margie just alluded to. So then, but the pressure now is I got to somehow, I can't make them seem too nice, can't make them seem too likable because of the fag agenda that you're enslaved yeah. to as yeah. a part of the media. Yeah. As long as a little bit of truth gets out there, that right. it, somewhere in the middle of the story it says, uh, Westboro Baptist Church believes that God is punishing America for its acceptance of homosexuality. Something like that, a little bit of doctrine gets out right. there. We're all right the with the rest. Of it. What makes Westboro Baptist correct and every other religion wrong? See, we, we, keep, we just can't get away from this notion that there's a human that. institution. 
The Bible is the standard. It just happens to be in this generation, we're the only ones that will stand flat-footed without being paid for it and tell you plainly what the Bible says. We didn't make this stuff the, the up. The short answer to your question is the Bible. You, it's but don't you think you can take the Bible? And no, no, you can't. No, you can't we've heard that way too many if you times. Want to, you can and furthermore, to. the disingenuousness of that question from this culture today, who doesn't give two rats backsides, what it actually says or what God requires of them. So it's so disingenuous until it some days is painful that we get these um, supposed tricky questions of what about this being inconsistent with this? There's only one inconsistency. It's your knowledge and understanding of it. We look at our fleshly relationships quite differently than most of the world does. I literally believe, because the scripture supports this, is that um, there isn't anything to blood relatives. The fact that there are many people who live here who are related by blood has nothing to do with the concept of who your spiritual kin is. Who is my brother? Who is my mother? Do you still love your daughter? I love everybody on this earth. I'm not allowed to hate people. I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself. And Lauren is still my neighbor. And I'm still willing to warn her about her sin. I'm still willing to warn her about her rejection of the counsel of God. We say go with us the way is good. If you don't want to go with us, you don't think the way is good, you honestly, I'm going to tell you quite honestly, every niece and nephew of mine, every sibling of mine who I spent years with, of course I loved them, and of course I shed a few tears when they left, but they quickly fade into the sunset. They don't want to live the way I want to live, they don't honestly want to be in communion with me. They don't honestly want to be in touch with us. They just want to give you a talking point. And by you in this sentence, I mean the media. And I've told some of these young people, they're going to use you. You don't care. None of you media folks care how those young people are doing temporally from the world's perspective. You wouldn't cross the street to give them a dollar if they needed it. If the real truth were told, and you sure you. don't care about the state of their soul. You're only interested in them because of where they came from. Yeah, you wouldn't have given them a, you wouldn't know about them, let alone care about them. If it hadn't been Westboro Baptist Church they left from, to keep people foaming at the mouth in some hope that if enough of them leave, how many times? If I had a penny for every time I've read, enough of them will go and they'll die. That's the only reason you guys ever inquire about this issue. And I've tried to, a couple of them have reached out and had some contact with me, and I've tried to tell them. You're, you're just letting them use you. Don't do that. It's just going to hurt you in the end. That's all this is. You don't care about it. You, if I were to start ticking off these kids who have left, or some of them aren't kids anymore, and say, how's it going with them? Any reporter who's ever asked us, any of you, from Katie Kirk to you and everything in between. You don't have the first clue how they're living. You don't have the first clue how they're doing. You don't have the first clue how they're thinking. And you don't care. But you expect us to, even though you encourage them to say the most god-awful things and lie about us horribly. And you're going to try to challenge whether we love those young people because we won't on some hypothetical straw man claim, take their email or call at this hour, and I'm telling you right here and now, not a one of them has emailed, called, snail mailed, shown up, my, up at my door, or smoke signaled me in a single way. And there's not one of them that has left this place that I can remember that I didn't personally go to them and kindly in implore them not to make that mistake. Now there's nothing else we can do. They're grow dogs as they say. I, I don't know who's going to heaven. I don't know the hearts of men, but I can tell you this, I, I can read and I can see who walks according to that word in the best way that they know how. And the men of the world don't do that. Going back to what you said, you said you don't know who's going to heaven. Yeah. Are you sure you're going to heaven? No. I don't. Uh, anybody who claims 100% uh, 
with 100% certainty that they're going to heaven is, is, is a fool.